Imagine you're out in the woods. The snow outside is waist deep, your fire's burned low, and the air is so cold it cuts like a knife. Most people today wouldn't survive a single night, but for Native American families, sleeping inside their teepees meant warmth, safety, and survival without modern insulation, heaters, or heavy walls. How did they pull this off? The answer to this lies in survival methods so clever that they are even better than some modern technologies. Miss even one of these survival techniques, and you wouldn't just be cold, you'd freeze solid before sunrise. Master them, and you could live through the harshest winters the Great Plains ever unleashed. You see, the Plains winter was no ordinary season. It was a predator. Temperatures plunged far below freezing, icy winds howled through the night, and every mistake came with a cost. Yet the teepee was no ordinary shelter. Built from strong poles and layered buffalo hides, it blocked wind, vented smoke, and with a small central fire, became a climate-controlled fortress against the cold. Renowned anthropologist Reginald Laubin, who lived among the Plains tribes, documented all of this in detail in his book called The Indian Teepee, Its History, Construction, and Use, co-written with his wife, Gladys. Their research confirmed just how effective the teepee was at staying warm in winter, cool in summer, and dry in storms. One of the most important aspects of their survival came down to where and how they set up camp, long before the real cold even arrived. For Native American tribes, choosing the right winter site was a literal matter of life or death. One wrong move and families could turn into popsicles overnight. The smartest choice would be choosing a wind-protected spot. Tree lines acted like natural walls, blocking icy winds that could turn even the best shelter into a freezer. Choosing wind-protected areas was everything, because just a few hundred feet away in a more exposed atmosphere, conditions could be drastically colder. Cliffs and rock faces also played a crucial part in creating a survivable environment. Stone faces would absorb sunlight during the day and slowly radiate warmth through the night. Valleys offered protection from harsh winds while keeping resources close at hand. Camps had to be near fresh water sources because relying on melted snow all winter wasted useful energy and fuel. Hunting grounds nearby were a source of fresh meat, but they also had to avoid areas crowded with predators that would gladly turn the hunters into food. When it came to staying alive, food, water, and firewood mattered above all else. And firewood was absolutely non-negotiable. Death was guaranteed if they ran out of it in the middle of a storm. Even snow had a valuable purpose. Instead of avoiding it, they packed it down flat, creating insulation that prevented the ground from freezing too deeply and stopped spring melt from soaking their capsules. Elevation mattered too. Low dips became frost traps where temperatures dropped even lower than the land nearby. Just being 10 feet higher up a slope could be the difference between survival and death. But finding the perfect campsite was only the first step. Building safe indoor fires inside what was essentially a giant fabric home was the real challenge. What that meant was converting something as threatening as open flames into a consistent heating system, and the tippy fire was exactly that, a carefully engineered setup designed to warm the space without burning everything down or suffocating everyone in the process. The fire pit was always placed in the dead center so that the heat would distribute evenly across. It was around six inches deep so the heat could rise instead of staying stuck at ground level. This design also kept the ventilation system working properly. Cooking inside was like balancing fire in a paper house. One mistake and the whole camp could go up in flames. So how did they make it work? At the top of the teepee were smoke flaps that acted as vents. Depending on the wind, they could be shifted to create a chimney effect, sucking smoke upward and out. Small side openings near the bottom let in just enough fresh air to keep the fire alive without turning the interior into an icebox. It functioned like a central heating system powered by wood. But this didn't work with anything other than dry wood. Wet or green logs would cause the tippy to be covered in thick, suffocating smoke. This was one of the reasons they stacked firewood vertically in cone shapes. It burned hotter, cleaner, and more efficiently than laying it flat. Only one thing could fight the cold, and it was heat. It had to be hot enough to sleep through the night, but not so intense that it roasted everyone alive. This made managing the fire an important responsibility. Adults took turns tending to the fire and adjusting ventilation through the night. Native Americans acted like thermostats, except instead of tapping buttons on a wall, they were keeping their families alive. The fire may have warmed the air, but the ground was a whole different story. Cold wasn't just in the air, it came upward from the frozen earth, ready to suck the heat right out of everyone's body. The ground insulation system was the real foundation of survival, because even the strongest of fires couldn't fight off the cold coming in from beneath. 
To tackle this, Native Americans built layers that acted like a bridge between people and the icy ground. First came thick padding, which was a foundational layer intended to keep the cold out. Tightly woven and layered willow mats produced tiny air pockets that served as organic insulation. Additionally, layers of dried grass were piled together to retain moisture throughout the winter and trap heat. It was like constructing furniture right out of the woods, except they used their survival instincts rather than complicated manuals. Because when the alternative is freezing to death, even a grass mat becomes a lifeline. Then there were buffalo hides and animal furs. These weren't just thrown on top, they were carefully arranged to tackle the cold effectively. Furs were always laid hair side up to trap precious body heat, and the leather side served as a barrier against drafts. Different animal furs either retained heat or absorbed moisture. Some tribes even perfected the use of compacted earth beds, a method that may seem primitive but was incredibly effective. They removed the top layer of dirt, packed the ground rock hard, and used it to store warmth from the day. That heat would gradually release over the night, functioning as a naturally heated mattress. The bedding itself wasn't flat either. It was shaped into shallow nests that held warm air and protective pockets. Families used these areas wisely, positioning people with higher body heat next to children or others who needed more warmth. Cuddling created a clever heat distribution system. Of course, this whole setup required daily care. Mats had to be fluffed, grass dried, hides shaken, and repositioned. Only then could the system keep working at its best. But if you didn't know how to manage the heat of a human body, even the most perfectly constructed bed would be useless. You see, surviving winter wasn't just about throwing on more fur. It was about converting the human body into a heating machine. In fact, tribes were experts in hacking bodily heat. They would perform mild exercises before bed, not the kind that would make them like CBUM, but just enough movement to increase their core temperature and circulate blood, similar to a workout before bed that's meant to keep you warm rather than cool. And the clothing wasn't random layering. They put on soft hides, which were closest to the skin. It controlled moisture and provided insulation. Additionally, air was trapped by heavy skins or thick fur, which functioned as a warm blanket. The outer layers blocked chilly winds and shut everything in. Undressing at night might be normal today, but it was straight up fatal back then. These people actually slept in more clothes than a winter fashion show model. But the real challenge was protecting the fingers and toes. They lose heat the fastest. The tribes covered them in animal skins, tucked hands into armpits, and pulled feet into blankets or special warming spots. Now here's the part most people don't realize. Too much sweating during the day meant damp clothes at night, and damp clothes in freezing weather meant instant hypothermia. So instead of flexing like today's fitness culture, they had to pace themselves to not sweat. And when temperatures dropped to truly dangerous levels, they cranked it up even more. Animal fat mixed with fire ash was smeared directly on the skin. This created a waterproof, heat-retaining shield against frostbite. So yeah, survival wasn't just about being tough. It was a mixture of cleverness, hacks, and planning, the kind of survival life hacks you don't see in TikTok videos. Now clothing and body heat were important. But when temperatures dropped to truly deadly levels, survival required taking things to an extreme. Native Americans back then smeared animal fat directly onto their skin. It included buffalo, bear, or deer fat. It wasn't just food, it was insulation. It produced a waterproof seal that kept chilly winds out and retained body heat. They occasionally added fire ash to drive things up a notch. It may sound gross, but it was effective. The ash served as a protective layer against frostbite and darkened the skin, which helped in the absorption of the limited amount of sunlight. In reality, it was a survival face paint. You just couldn't risk anything in those conditions. Even the smallest area left exposed could result in frostbite by morning. Every inch of exposed flesh was important. These were no random tricks. Establishing skin level heat barriers when clothing couldn't always provide protection. These were early, scientifically sound survival tips. This was no high-tech equipment or fashionable clothing. It was skincare for survival centuries before influencers tried to sell you a $200 cream. However, the cold was brutal, and it wasn't fair to anyone, especially the kids and the elders. Tribes were aware that the most vulnerable were children and the elderly. They chose the safest, warmest places to sleep close to the fire because of this. The strongest family members frequently slept near children, serving as live heat shields, while children were covered in the heaviest hides and layered more than adults. Elders who lacked physical strength were given similar care. Even hot stones pulled from the fire were tucked into bedding turning simple nests of dirt and fur into natural heated mattresses. Every sleeping position was chosen to maximize heat retention and minimize risk. Children were often placed between adults using shared body heat as a natural blanket. Survival was about collective responsibility. Everyone contributed to keeping the weakest warm. 
If even one person failed, the whole group was at risk. In these frozen environments, warmth didn't just mean comfort, it meant survival, and survival was always shared. And remember, warmth meant nothing if you didn't survive to see the dawn. Fire kept you alive through the cold, but vigilance kept you alive through the night. Firelight, cooking smells, and game meat often attracted predators right to the edges of camp. Wolves, cougars, even hungry bears prowled the shadows, and sleeping families were easy targets. Having some kind of defense was the only way to survive. They trained dogs, who served as alarm systems in addition to being companions. Because they were trained to detect danger, they would bark in different ways to alert people to different risks, such as a pack of wolves circling the camp or a lone wolf. Weapons were kept within arm's reach because the slightest hesitation could result in death. Response protocols for various animal encounters were practiced and understood by all family members, ensuring that everyone was aware of their responsibilities when threats were detected. Snowbanks were packed into barriers to limit predators' access, so even the design of the camp served as protection. They set fires for both protection and warmth. Every rustle in the dark and every barrier of snow played a role in the equation for survival. Because in the dead of winter, fire kept you warm, but an active mind and strategy kept you alive. And sometimes, survival wasn't about fighting the brutality of the cold, it was about surviving the predators that came with it. Native Americans didn't just survive harsh winters, they owned them. It wasn't just about tools or fire, it was the mindset. They didn't curse the cold or hope it would pass. They respected it, studied it, and shaped their lives around it. Unlike us, cranking up the heat and crying about frostbitten hair, they worked with nature, not against it. Tribes moved camps seasonally, adjusted shelters, layered clothing strategically, and relied on shared knowledge rather than gadgets. Kids grew up learning to read wind, track snow, and choose the right furs, not from books, but from lived experience. Survival wasn't just a skill, it was wisdom passed down through generations, and their way of getting around was nothing short of brilliant. Snowshoes, sleds, and toboggans were essential tools built perfectly for forests, open plains, and icy tundra. They memorized trails, layered their clothing to stay warm and move easily, and every tool had a specific purpose perfected over generations. They could travel through blizzards carrying meat and firewood smoothly, while most of us can't even find our driveway in the snow. It all comes down to mindset. They didn't fight the winter, they danced with it. And that's the real lesson. So imagine spending a night in a teepee in minus 20 degree weather. No phone, no heater, just body heat, brains, maybe a cousin or two, and a few heated stones. Would you manage or just accept your fate right there? Today, survival schools still teach fat as insulation. Architects build earth sheltered homes that mimic the heat storing tricks of packed earth beds. And soldiers? They still learn star navigation and fire tending the same way native families did centuries ago. These weren't primitive hacks, they were blueprints we still use, whether we realize it or not. Because in the dead of winter, comfort doesn't keep you alive, knowledge does. So here's a question for you. If the power went out tomorrow and the temperature dropped below freezing, which of these methods would you try first? The fire tending, the bedding tricks, or the skin shield of fat and ash? Let me know in the comments, because survival isn't just history, it's a challenge we might face again. And if you enjoyed uncovering this forgotten wisdom, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel, because the past still has lessons that might just save your future. We've got more stories of survival, legends, and hidden history waiting, and trust me, you won't want to miss the next one.